Dear viewers, in continuation to our study of historical background of the revelation of Surah Hazab, today we will discuss uh, about uh, Shoshari worms which were being carried out at that time in the state of Medina. Social reforms, though the period of two years between the Battle of Uhud and the Trench was a period of disturbance and turmoil, and the Holy Prophet and his companion could hardly relax in peace and security even for a day. The work of reform as a whole and the reconstruction of the Muslim society continued uninterrupted. This was the time when the Islamic law pertaining to marriage and divorce were complemented. The law of inheritance was introduced, drinking and gambling were prohibited, and the new laws and regulations concerning many other aspects of the economic and social life were enforced. In this connection, an important thing that needed to be reformed was the question of the adoption of a son. Whoever was adopted by the Arabs as a son was regarded as one of their of own offspring. He got share in inheritance. He was treated like a real son and real brother by the adopted mother and the adopted sister. He could not marry the daughter of his adopted father and his widow after his death. And the same was the case if the adopted son died or divorced a wife. The adopted father regarded the woman as his real daughter-in-law. This custom clashed in every detail with the laws of marriage and divorce and inheritance enjoined by Allah in Surah Al-Baqarah and An-Nisa. It made a person who could get no share in inheritance entitled to it at the expense of those who were really entitled to it. Prohibited marriage between the men and the women who could contract marriage perfectly lawfully. And above all, it helped spread the immoralities which the Islamic law wanted to eradicate. For a real mother and a real sister and a real daughter cannot be like the adopted mother and uh, the adopted sister and the adopted daughter. However, one may try to sanctify the adopted relations as a custom when the artificial relations endued with customary sanctity are allowed to mix freely like uh, the real relations it cannot but produce evil result that is why the islamic law of marriage and divorce the law of inheritance and the law of the Prohibition of adultery required that the concept and custom of regarding the adopted son as the real son should be eradicated completely. This concept, however, could not be rooted out by merely passing a legal order saying the adopted son is not the real son. The centuries old prejudices and superstitions cannot be changed by mere word of mouth. Even if the people had accepted the command that these relations were not the real relations, they would still have looked upon marriage between the adopted mother and the adopted uh, son, the adopted brother and the sister, the adopted father and the daughter and the adopted father-in-law and the daughter-in-law odious and detestable moreover the there would still exist some freedom of mixing together freely therefore it was inevitable that the custom should be eradicated practically and through the holy prophet وسلم, himself for no muslim could ever conceive that a thing done by the holy prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself and done by him under Allah's command could be detestable. Therefore, a little before the battle of the trench, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was inspired by Allah that he should marry the divorced wife of his adopted 
son Zaid bin Harisa radiyallahu anhu and he acted on his this command during the siege of the Bani Quraiza the delay probably was caused for the reason that the prescribed waiting period had not yet ended and in the meantime the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had to become busy in the preparation for war storm of propaganda at the marriage of hazrat zainab radhiyallahu anha as soon as the marriage was contracted there arose a storm of propaganda against the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the polytheists the hypocrites and the jews all were burning with jealousy at his triumphs which followed one after the other the way they had been humbled within 2 years after uhud in the battle of the trench and in the affair of the qurayzam had made them sore at heart they had also lost hope that they could ever subdue him on the battlefield therefore they seized the question of this marriage as a god send for themselves and thought they would put and and to his moral superiority which was the real secret of his power and success therefore stories were concocted that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam god forbid had fallen in love with his daughter in law and when the son had come to know of this he divorced his wife and the father married his daughter in law nauzubillah the propaganda however was absurd on the face of it Hazrat Zainab was the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam's first cousin. He had known her from childhood to youth, so there could be no question of his falling in love with her at first sight. Then he himself had arranged her marriage with Hazrat Zaid radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu under his personal influence, although her whole family had opposed it. They did not like that a daughter of the noble Quraysh should be given in a marriage to a freed slave Hazrat Zainab radhiyallahu anha herself was not happy at this arrangement but everyone had to submit to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam's command the marriage was solemnized and a precedent was set in arabia that islam had raised a freed slave to the status of the Quraishite nobility if the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam had in reality any desire for hazrat zainab radhiyallahu ta'ala anha there was no need of marrying her to hazrat zaid radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he himself could have married her but in spite of all this the shameless opponents invented stories of love spread them with great exaggeration and publicized them so vehemently that even some muslim also began to accept them as true preliminary commandments of veil parda the fact that the tales invented by the enemies also became topics of the conversation among the muslim was a clear sign that the element of sensuality in society had crossed all limits if this melody had not been there it was not possible that minds would have paid any attention whatever to such absurd and disgusting stories about a righteous and pure person like the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam this was precisely the occasion when the reformative commandments pertaining to the law of hijab or parda or veil were first enforced in the islamic society these reforms were introduced in this sura and complemented a year later in sura an-nur when a slander was made on the honor of hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha domestic affairs of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam there were two other problems which needed attention at that time do apparently they pertain to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam's domestic life it was necessary to resolve them for the domestic and mental peace of the person
who was exerting every effort to promote the cause of Allah's religion and was day and night absorbed in this great mission. Therefore, Allah took these two problems also officially in His own hand. The first problem was that economically the Holy Prophet وسلم, at that time was in certain circumstances. During the first four years, he had no source of income, whatever. In the year four after Hijrah, after the banishment of the Bani Anadar, a portion of their evacuated lands was reserved for his use by the command of Allah, but it was not enough for his family requirements. On the other hand, the duties of the office of prophethood were so onerous that they were absorbing all his energies of the mind and body and heart and every moment of his time. He could not make any effort at all for earning his livelihood. In conditions such as these, when his wives happened to disturb his mental peace because of economic hardships, he would feel doubly strained and taxed. The other problem was that before marrying Hazrat Zainab anha, he had four wives already in the houses. Hazrat Sauda, Hazrat Aisha, Hazrat Hafsa and Hazrat Umm Salma Rizwanullahi Ajma'een. Hazrat Zainab anha, was his fifth wife at this the opponents raised the objection and the Muslim also started entertaining doubts that as for others, it had been forbidden to keep more than four wives at a time. But how the Holy Prophet ﷺ himself had taken a fifth wife also. Here we take a break. Alhamdulillah, we have completed the study of the fourth episode of Surah Al-Hazab. In the next episode, we will study more about uh, the events surrounding uh, Battle of Trench. Kindly continue to watch my videos by subscribing my channel Jamil TV. Thanks.